The Civil War in Arkansas, 150 years later. My name is Richard Davies. I'm director of the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism. And with me is Mark Chris from the Historic Preservation Program in the Department of Arkansas Heritage. Mark and I both serve as commissioners on the Arkansas Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission. Mark, 1862 was a big year for the Civil War in Arkansas, and up in northwest Arkansas, it was bookended by two battles, uh, Pea Ridge, just north of here, and Prairie Grove, where we are at the Prairie Grove Battlefield Historic State Park. Why were these battles significant way up here in the corner of the state? Well, really, the, uh, the, the, the core reason was the, uh, uh, the struggle to maintain Missouri for the, uh, for the Union. Those two battles uh, between them uh, ended uh, Northwest Arkansas as a possible approach for a Confederate invasion of Missouri and really uh, made, made uh, Missouri safer as a Union uh, property. And what happened at Prairie Grove? General James Blunt had uh, half of the army at, at Cane Hill, which is going to be a, a bit southwest of where we're uh, sitting here at the, at the battlefield. And the other half, under Francis Heron, was in Springfield, Missouri, 120 miles away. Long walk. A long walk. Thomas Carmichael Heinemann had hoped to attack Blunt at Cane Hill, crush him, and then deal with, with Heron. But uh, Blunt had kind of gotten wind that something was, was going on, so he asked uh, Heron to march from Springfield with, with, uh, as, as quickly as he could. Uh, which resulted in one of the uh, most monumental forced marches of the American Civil War. Uh, Heron's uh, uh, division marched from Springfield to Fayetteville in three days, 120 miles in three days. Uh, from there, they, uh, on the morning of December 7th, they continued, they continued on this way. So effectively, a three and a half day march, they were then tossed into a, a pitched battle. Uh, Heron approached from, uh, from the, uh, the, the north east, uh, opposite the Borden House. Uh, there's a, an artillery duel in the morning, and then uh, uh, part of Heron's forces charges up the, the, past the Borden House into the uh, Borden Orchard behind it, where they're uh, uh, trapped in an L-shaped ambush by uh, Confederate troops who just, uh, just slaughter the, uh, uh, three quarters of the men are, are down before this battle's, uh, that portion of the battle's over. Uh, one historian has called it the most intense firefight of the entire Civil War. Wow. Um, they then fall back, uh, back onto Crawford's Prairie where they're protected by uh, the superior Union artillery. The Confederates countercharge, and in, in their turn, they're slaughtered on the, uh, on the prairie by uh, uh, the, the Federal artillery. In the area where we're sitting, half the Confederate Army is not even engaged at this, uh, at this point. And, uh, Finally, they decide, well, we, we can just wheel off of here and, and crush Heron. Uh, right. He's, he's uh, largely uh, outnumbered at this point. And as they begin that movement, suddenly there's a, uh, a cannon shot from the northwest and comes sailing over into this area, and it's blunt. He has, uh, he has marched from, uh, from Cane Hill up to Ray's Mills and is now, you know, literally in the nick of time, is showing up at the, uh, at the battle to uh, uh, stop this attack from the, uh, from the left. There's, uh, there's fighting on this side as, as night falls. Uh, the Confederates still hold the ridge. The, the Yanks hold the valley. They've, uh, they've reunited. Uh, and uh, during the course of the battle, uh, uh, Heinemann does not have any support uh, uh, from ammunition or food. So the Confederates are forced to quietly withdraw into the, uh, into the Boston Mountains and uh, ultimately down to Van Buren and Fort Smith. So the fight might have been a draw, but because the Confederates had no ammo and had to leave, it was a tactical or maybe strategic Union victory? Very much a strategic Union victory because uh, never again would Northwest Arkansas be used as an avenue for invasion of Missouri. And where can people go to find more information about all this? One place I would recommend, of course, is the uh, Arkansas Civil War Sesquicentennial uh, Commission's website at ArkansasCivilWar150.com. We have uh, a list of, uh, of sites around the states, battlefields, museums, uh, other Civil War-related uh, uh, places that, that, you can, uh, that you can visit. There's also a good uh, uh, information about uh, books and things like that that you can, uh, you can read to learn more about the, uh, the war in Arkansas. Are there some significant events coming up in 2012 to commemorate 1862 in Arkansas? Uh, December uh, 1st and 2nd of 2012, uh, uh, we will have a reenactment right here at uh, uh, 
Prairie Grove Battlefield Historic State Park that will probably be one of the larger events we'll see anywhere in the state uh, during, during the course of the, the sesquicentennial. And uh, throughout the course of the year, uh, every month there's, uh, there, there's at least a dozen uh, commemorative activities scheduled at different places around the, uh, around the state. And uh, the, the events page at ArkansasCivilWar150.com keeps, uh, keeps track of that, and, and we're, we're adding new, uh, new events almost on a daily basis. One thing I'll put a plug in about that website that I think is pretty cool is that the, there's a list of all the units, Confederate and Union, that fought in the Civil War in Arkansas and where they were. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a, a visitor from Iowa, or if you're from somebody from Little Rock and you know what unit somebody was in, you can go to the website and find where they went in Arkansas. And a lot of people are actually traveling around and, mm -hmm. and seeing that. Yes, I've, I've met people who are traveling in the footsteps of their ancestors, and, and that's great for them, and it's great for the state of Arkansas. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate all the great information you brought us. And thank you all for joining us. Be sure to check Arkansas.com for podcasts like this and lots of information about what you can see and do in the state of Arkansas, especially during the Civil War sesquicentennial.